It is an honor for us to welcome our distinguished speaker, Professor Dr. Cheng Huiming from the Department of Physiology, Faculty of Medicine, University Malaya in uh, Malaysia. We would also uh, like to welcome all the students. We have about uh, 270 students from one year uh, academic, academic staffs and faculty members of Faculty of Medicine Diponegoro University. Hope you guys all enjoy our speaker's presentation and have a fruitful discussion. Now, without further ado, we are continuing our meeting to our main agenda, that is to hear the lecture. The lecture will be moderated by one of our uh, great teacher in the Department of Physiology, Dr. Dr. Hardian. To Dr. Hi. Hardian, yeah. Yeah. the time yeah. is yours, Dr. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dr. Tanjung. Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad we have uh, Prof. Cheng here uh, because uh, Prof. Cheng is very famous in the world. Yeah. He's uh, <laughs> one of the, the best uh, teacher in physiology in the world. Yeah. So if, if you not believe me, you can uh, search by yourself uh, the internet. You, you just type Prof. Cheng and you can see the name Prof. Cheng uh, in many universities in the world. Yeah. So we are, we are very uh, glad to have a lecture from Prof. Cheng. Yeah. So I think because our time is limited, so Prof. Cheng, uh, please, uh, right. you can start the lecture. Thank yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Hadian, for this uh, introduction and for arranging this with your students. Uh, yeah, I, I was fascinated by your background, Dr. Hadian. Uh, your background has a lot of <laughs> rocks. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> anyway. the, an, the, the ancient book <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, this uh, seminar uh, or session, uh, is, there is a bit of echo, I think. Uh, maybe some of the mics are not muted. I, I can hear echo. It's okay now. Uh, it's better now. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, this um, session is. This session is not strictly a. Not, it's not strictly a talk. It is a more interactive session, but I will be explaining as we go through the list of uh, I think thirteen questions. Uh, these thirteen questions have been designed to cover most of the key concept in uh, cardiovascular physiology. So I have sent uh, the list of questions ahead of time to all the students so that they can look at it and hopefully they can interact uh, comfortably and uh, in this session. So uh, maybe we can put up the question. Uh, is, it, is it Malikul? Did I get your name correctly? Maybe help. you could help me to put up the question, to share screen, sorry. Dr. Tanjung, maybe yeah. you can share the screen. Yeah, I try. Yeah. And the student, please uh, read the, the answer. Yeah, we will use that as the basis for the uh, session. Ah, thank you. Right. Yeah. Ah, okay. Right. So, uh, so I have been using the same set of questions, and it's been quite useful, uh, not only in Malaysia but in, in several other medical schools in Indonesia as well as other countries like in Pakistan uh, and uh, uh, Vietnam and so on. Yeah. So, so what I normally do, and I hope students will feel comfortable, uh, although English is not as commonly used in Indonesia, it's okay. Don't worry about your, your grammar or that. You know, we just want to hear some answers. So, uh, so the, the person who respond to the first question, just unmute and first of all, read the question for us. And then all the 13 sentences, uh, you are asked to give an opinion, whether it's true or false. 
and then give a short answer why you say is true or false. And then after the student's response, I will give a little bit of brief explanation of the concept or, or the principles behind asking the question. And then we will run through uh, all the questions uh, by the by the next uh, about 60 minutes, yeah, okay. So yeah, so let's start with the first one on uh, pacemaker potential. Yeah, so anyone please feel comfortable so that I don't have to call your name. Uh, sometimes I ask for a list of 10 yeah. names just to, yeah. just to yeah. warm up. <laughs> yeah, maybe I, I, I will uh, ask uh, uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's she right. always uh, call me for lecture. Yeah, Violeta, please, number one. <laughs> yeah, you can call um, your student's name, yeah. Uh, thank you, Violeta. Sure, sir. I will... Uh, okay, Violeta, yeah. I will read the question first. Please, thank you. Decide if each of following statements are true or false. Number one, the duration of the pacemaker potential is increased by cardiac sympathetic nerve. Okay, Violeta, do you... Do you uh, Do you have an answer for that? The answer is true because the duration of pacemaker potential does not increase by stimulation of sympathetic nerve. What has changed due to stimulation of the sympathetic nerve is the increased movement of more natrium and calcium and they took the T-pipe implant okay. of a GI channel. And this is caused the acceleration of depolarization so that the threshold is reached more quickly. This okay. faster movement toward the threshold due to the sympathetic influence of flow uh, to the pacemaker. Right. So the answer right. is true. Okay, your uh, Violeta, your your explanation is is actually uh, very good and accurate, but. Uh, but if I if I look at your explanation, which is good, then I would say the sentence is false, based on your own explanation. Yeah, because you said that uh, that the with when the when the pacemaker uh, the SA node is stimulated by sympathetic, then the time to reach the threshold is faster, right? That's why you get an increase in heart rate. So if the time to reach the threshold is faster, it means that the duration of the pacemaker potential, which is the, the spontaneous depolarization, will be faster. So actually the duration is shorter. Uh, so what I think uh, in your explanation is the, the gradient of the pacemaker is greater, the, the slope, okay? But the duration is actually shorter uh, do you see the difference so so this is a reason for asking this question that there are two two parameters of the pacemaker potential the spontaneous depolarization sometimes we call this the pre potential before the actual action potential so one is the slope of the pacemaker potential which is the the gradient the other one is the duration Okay, so if the slope is steeper, which is what you describe in your explanation, uh, then the duration is shorter because it takes a shorter time to reach the threshold. So if you change the duration to the gradient, then the sentence is true. But if it's a duration, then it's actually uh, false. Do you see the difference, Violeta? Sure, sir. Yeah, okay. Thank you for the yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the, the, the key word there to note is duration. Yeah, it, it actually takes a shorter time to reach the threshold, yeah. Okay, thank you for the response, yeah. Uh, okay, we can move on to question two. Uh, from SA note, we move to something about the cardiac muscle. Next person, anyone? Adian can call your another student. <laughs> yeah, okay, Mar Michael, please. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can't escape. Yeah, yeah Dr. Yeah. Hadian knows all your name. <laughs> Mariko. Oh, yeah. Mariko, okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yes, Maliko. Yeah, read Bro. the sentence for us, guys. Okay. Bro. Okay, read, read, read the sentence, yeah. please. So at least we hear your voice. Okay, the first, uh, I will read the, sen the sentence first. Yeah. Starting law of the heart is no longer ap applicable in a transplanted heart. Right. What do you think? Uh, I think the answer is false. Okay, and then the reason? Because uh, sterling law of the heart, the more the, the cardiac muscle is stressed, the okay. stronger the contraction. Right. From the law, we can conclude that this law is only applicable to anatomically real hearts, whether it is transplanted or not. Okay. Artificial heart cannot do the same things because they are made of irons and don't have any stretchy muscles. However, a transplanted heart is able to do the starting law because when the operation happens, doctor already connect the blood vessels so that heart will act like usual and blood will be circulated. Yeah, okay, so, uh, so basically your your concept is correct. So here I want to highlight that when you define or when Starling's law or sometimes called mechanism of the heart muscle is defined, uh, they use the word in, intrinsic. This is an intrinsic mechanism. So the, the, this is a key word. So any mechanism in physiology, if you see the word intrinsic, uh, whether it's Starling's law or maybe some other mechanism like renal autoregulation is intrinsic. It means that you do not need any extrinsic input. Okay, And in physiology, the two major extrinsic influence is almost always either neural, the nerve, or the circulating hormones. So because Starling's law of the heart uh, describes a natural property, intrinsic mechanism of the heart, you don't need an extrinsic nerve. So in a transplanted heart, the donor's heart, uh, it is always obviously a denervated heart. Okay, so, so although the transplanted heart from the donor is a denervated heart, it, it, the, the intrinsic property of the cardiac muscle will still respond in the same way as described by Starling. Meaning, if the transplanted heart is filled with more blood, you increase the EDV and diastolic volume, it will be stretched more, the tension generated by greater filling of the ventricle uh, will produce a greater tension. And so you will get a greater stroke volume. Yeah, okay. So very good, uh, Malikul. So this sentence is uh, also incorrect, yeah. It's still applicable, okay. Starling's law is still, Starling's intrinsic mechanism or law of the heart is still applicable in a denervated, transplanted heart. Okay, let's move on to question three. Question, th question three, Kaila. Okay, Kaila, where are you? Kaila, yeah. Kaila, where are you? <laughs> Kaila? Kaila, Nafasia, Marli. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Can I have a moment because my internet connection is pretty bad here. I will change my connection first. Okay. 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 So we are waiting you, Professor. Last okay. time I have a uh, very good questions from uh, the student, but I forget the, the name who asked me. Okay. Uh, he he asked about the uh, why the uh, we have uh, still some blood uh, after uh, systolic. Uh, okay. So, okay. so what, what is the reason uh, behind it? Thank you, Professor. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I. Yeah. Why does the why does the heart does not empty itself? Huh? 
Yes. Uh, this must be something to do with the anatomical architecture, I think. Whether the way the heart contracts, it is possible to pump out everything. I, I, I don't really know. This must be something to do with biophysics. Yeah. There's always some blood left behind. Yes. Yes, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so it is very interesting yes. question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's something so, to do with uh, biophysics, I think. Yes. Uh, so last uh, in the time, I answered that it may be related to uh, to to the uh, startling mechanism because maybe uh, it's necessary to to initiate the uh, enlargement of uh, the stretch of uh, cardiac muscle uh, before uh, systolic. I I thought, but maybe it's the the volume that necessary to to stretch the cardiac muscle the ventricle right, yeah. Right, right. yeah yeah but this is an interesting question yeah, yeah. yes very interesting but i'm not sure with my answer yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but this is is a good question to ask yeah yeah okay kaila are you ready uh, okay doctor yeah. i'm ready okay yeah, okay Okay, so my answer for the question number three is false because the highest pressure of circulating blood is found in arteries and gradually drops as the blood flows through the arterioles, capillaries, venules, and veins, where it is the lowest. The greatest drop in blood pressure occurs in the transition from arteries to arter arterioles. Okay, Thank yeah. You. So, uh, so there is some drop in the capillary, uh, generally described as from about 30 at the arteriola end to, to about 15 at the venial end. But the greater drop you see, if you look at the pressure profile from the left side to the right side of the heart, uh, the greatest drop is in the arteriola. Uh, this is described as the major resistance uh, vessels in the systemic circulation. And so, so where you find the greatest uh, resistance to blood flow, uh, that will be the same place you'll find the greatest drop in pressure. Yeah, okay. So this one is uh, highlighting that the arterial is a site of the greatest vascular resistance. It has a uh, smooth muscle, uh, smooth muscle, and also is innervated by the sympathetic nerve. So the, the muscle tone is quite high at the arterial. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Kayla, yeah, for the response. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, let's move to question four. Question four, Ifan, are you there? I saw your name. <laughs> <laughs> Ifan, please. Hello. Hi, Ivan. Hello. Where are yeah. you? Yeah. Uh, I'm here, doctor. Okay. Yeah. If you are able to uh, turn on a camera, it would be nice to see your yeah. face. Yeah, okay. If you are able to, yeah. yeah. So please turn on the camera. Yeah. I forgot to say it. Thank you for the short. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Okay, uh, doctor. My name is Ivan. To uh, answer the question number four, yeah. the question is: sympathetic activity increase the capillary. I think we lost you. Yeah. Yeah, the connection is uh, bad. Okay. Yeah. Hydrostatic pressure. Nah. Uh, hello? Yeah. Yes, okay. Uh, uh, I think this answer, uh, my answer is false because the intrastatic pressure is the main force that determines uh, fluid vascularity. Uh, vascularity vary in the different tissues and at different levels within its capillary bed. Uh, the norm normal hydrostatic pressure in the capillary bed is controlled by local neogenic, neo neurogenic, and the humoral modulation of the arterial and venous resistance or 
in the other words, they they have their own auto regulation to regulate the hydrostatic pressure. Precapillary or arterial uh, constriction may reduce flow and therefore, and therefore hydrostatic pressure through a capillary bed and sun flow away from the bed, uh, resulting in change in the total surface are uh, a total surface area available cooler okay. when okay. Okay, yeah, so uh, you say this sentence is false uh, because uh, I, I couldn't hear the last part. So do you think the sympathetic activity will change the capillary hydrostatic pressure? Will it decrease it or, or it does not affect? Hello, Ivan, please answer uh, Prof. Chang's question. Yeah, so so you you gave some explanation, and so does that mean that you you think the sympathetic activity does not affect the pressure or decrease the pressure in the capillary? Yeah, maybe if uh, connection is uh, drop. Okay, yes, right. but yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyone else? Maybe any student? Yeah, maybe? yeah. Uh, Yes, Professor. Uh, Nadira, okay. Nadira. 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 Yeah. Yeah, this is the, the student that always contact me. Yeah. Ah, Nadira. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Nadira, hello. Nadira Para Yuta Maharani Himawan. Yeah. Her name is quite long. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. Very long name. Yeah. Yes. Five. Five names. Yeah. Serious, huh? Wow. Yeah. Nadira? He's not around. Oh. He's not around. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. So, uh, Nabila? Nabila Nirmala. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, maybe, yeah, okay. Please uh, answer Prof. Chang question. C can you answer it? Uh, or, hi, Nabila. I'm sorry. Can you repeat the question, Professor? The question is uh, on the screen. Question four. Question four. Okay. Okay. I think uh, sympathetic activity will increase the heart rate through the mechanism of increasing influx calcium and EF channel flow. Uh, so the stroke volume uh, and cardiac output and total peripheral resistance increases and blood pressure, in, blood pressure increase. That's all, thank you. So you, so you, so in other words, you think the answer is true. Is that correct? Yeah, yes. Okay, so it's different from Irfan. Okay, uh, yeah, let me just respond to the two students' uh, opinion. Yeah, so, so actually the, um, yeah, so I wanted to highlight that whenever you get sympathetic activity, the, there is a direct effect obviously on the arterioles. In, uh, the arterioles are the resistance vessel. So when you get a general increase in sympathetic, uh, although it is true you get increased heart rate stroke volume, but at the level of the arterial, you get a vasoconstriction, okay? Arteriola vasoconstriction. And, and I think you, you know that this is how the total peripheral resistance can, can increase when you have a better reflex. So, uh, and, the concept here is that when you get vasoconstriction of the arterial, arterial, there are two effects depending on whether it is uh, what they describe as upstream effect or the downstream. Okay, upstream means uh, before, depending on the direction of blood flow, that means before the arterial, the arterial pressure will go up. This is part of 
blood pressure regulation. Okay, but downstream, and this is a question. Capillary is obviously downstream uh, in relation to the direction of blood flow. Downstream from the arteriole, the capillary pressure actually drops. Yeah, you actually get a drop in the capillary hydrostatic pressure. So, so this question uh, says that the sympathetic activity increases would be incorrect because uh, the sympathetic activity by producing arteriolar vasoconstriction will increase the arterial blood pressure or the hydrostatic pressure in the arteries. But if it is a capillary, actually is decreased. Okay, so, so this sentence is incorrect because we are talking about the change in the capillary hydrostatic. Yeah, is that okay? Okay, thank you, Professor. Thank you, Nabila. And is it Irfan? Yeah, okay. We can move to question five. Yes. Uh, Angel, Aprilia. Angel? Hello, Angel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because uh, you know that uh, during COVID, sometime during uh yes. class uh like uh we invite the spirit we always ask are you there yeah 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 similar yeah <laughs> yeah angel angel aprilia angel Oh, just Excuse name. Me, sir. Okay, please. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, with yeah, please. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. So this is the fifth question, right? Yeah, number five. Okay. The fifth question is, uh, does my does my voice clear? Yes, very clear. Yes. yes very clear. Okay. During a battle reflex response in hypovolemia. But the heart rate and stroke volume will increase above the normal. So my answer is true because first of all, first of all the definition of baroreflex or baroreceptor reflex is one of the body's homeostatic, homeostatic mechanism that helps to maintain blood pressure at nearly constant levels. So that the decreased blood pressure decreases baroreflex activation and causes heart rate to increase and to restore blood pressure levels. The system relies on specialized neurons known, and known as baroreceptors, chiefly in the aortic arc and carotid synesis to monitor changes in blood pressure and relay them to the medulla oblongata. Baroreceptors are stretch receptors and, recept and respond to the pressure induced stretching of the blood vessel in which they are found. So hypovolemia is a condition in which the body loses a lot of blood and fluids. In this condition, blood pressure drops very dramatically. Therefore, to reach the point of homeostasis, the baroreflex response works response works by increasing the activity of the heart so that the blood in the blood is increasingly active in taking and circulating circulating oxygen. Thank you okay. for the opportunity, Prof. Thank you, uh, Vidya. Okay, Vidya, your your explanation for the baroreflex mechanism is good, is accurate. And uh, now if I ask you to focus, uh, same question. Now if I ask you to focus on the last two words, okay, it says above normal. You see the, the two words, above normal, okay? So the question is, uh, will the heart rate increase above normal and will the stroke volume increase above normal? So your explanation does tell us that it will increase. So the question is, do you think the increase in heart rate will be above normal. And do you think the stroke volume increase, but the barrel reflex will make the stroke volume become greater than normal? Yeah. So that's the, what, what do you think now? Do you think? Maybe I get some misunderstanding of no, uh, no, reading the question. Yeah. Yeah. Like I don't focus on I don't focus on the above normal. Yeah. Maybe it's just increase, but it's, it's right. like a normal range. It is not abnormal, so that I can can I if I can change the yes no, change the, your the answer. Do you it have is, a different opinion now. Yeah, it is maybe false because it is not 
about nor- normal. It is just increased, but in a normal range. So you think the heart rate won't increase above normal? Mm, yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So this is a little bit tricky. Well, not the uh, the idea is not to trick the student, but uh, the emphasis is that if you have a hypovolemia, drop in the blood volume, the barrel reflex will always produce tachycardia because the heart rate will be always above normal. Okay, but for the stroke volume, uh, it depends. Because if the drop in the blood volume is quite significant, although the increased contractility will try to increase the stroke volume, it may not necessarily be above normal, but it will definitely be better. So you, you get the idea? So you always get a tachycardia. Heart rate, always above normal. But stroke volume, hmm, you can't really say for sure because it depends on how great how much blood volume we have lost. Okay. So uh, because, it's not the but but their heart rate and stroke volume, right? It's just yeah, like one is one correct. Thing. Heart rate is always above normal. First part is correct. Second part is not necessarily true. So overall the sentence is incorrect here. Yeah. yeah, anyway, I just wanted to stress that uh, the that when you in when you have a compensatory increase in stroke volume, uh if you already have hypovolemia, obviously you improve the stroke volume, but you may not achieve an above normal stroke volume. But the response of the heart rate is always tachycardia. That one is true. Yeah. Thank you, Vidya. Yep. Okay, let's move to question six. Again, there are two parameters here, cardiac output and TPR. Please, who want to answer? Uh, yeah. Anyone can unmute. Yeah, don't, okay. Don't have to be called by Dr. Hadian. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Or maybe Vidya, you can uh, ask uh, one ah. of your friends to, to answer. That's right. Please, Vidya. Yeah. yeah, Vidya, you can ask. <laughs> okay, so I choose Tarigan Vanessa. Okay. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, ah, Vanessa, hi. Hi, yeah. Prof. Please open your video. Turn on your video. Yeah. Okay. Ah, thank you. That's nice. I can see a human being. <laughs> <laughs> Not spirit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. So I'm gonna answer a number six. Six. Yeah. Um. During exercise, the main arterial pressure increases when the cardiac output and TPR increase. So um. Based on what I read, the mean arterial pressure um, determined by the cardiac output and TPR. Hmm. Um, but the statement here, uh, the mean arterial pressure increase when the cardiac output and TPR increase. But uh, what I read is just the cardiac output is increasing, but the TPR is decreasing. So um, I think this is false because the mean arterial pressure increasing because the because only just the cardiac output increasing, not the TPR. Um, yeah, very good. Yeah, so 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 of course the equation that every every student know BP is CO times TPR, and in other situation when you get an increase in blood pressure, uh, it could be that both the determinants CO cardiac output and TPR increase. But in the exercise situation, as uh, Vanessa correctly said, the TPR actually is decreased. Uh, but the cardiac output, obviously, heart rate, stroke volume is increased. So, which means that during physical activity, the elevated blood pressure is due solely to the cardiac output, not, not to both because the TPR is actually decreased. Now, Vanessa, let me ask you, why do you say that the TPR is decreased during exercise? You, you are right, it's decreased, but I want to know, I want to find out why, uh, what is the reason for saying it decreases? Please answer, Vanessa. <laughs> She's thinking. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let me think it first. Okay, sure. Take your time. Okay. 
take yeah. one semester to think. <laughs> so, uh, how, what happens when you have decreased TPR? To Vanessa, just think logically. So, what causes a decrease in TPR? Um, the flow rate will be. Okay, in terms of the radius of the blood vessel. Um, ah. Oh. Uh, the radius of the blood vessel, if the TPR is um, increasing, the rest, the radius will get smaller. No, no, no. You you just told me that exercise TPR decreased. So I'm asking you, why does it decrease, not increase? So, so the, here is uh, uh, one of the, uh, the what is that? one of my uh, focus uh, with my own students in University of Malaya. I always want to ask them why. Uh, why do you say that this is the answer, whether it's correct or not? The, the, the reasons are more important sometimes. Uh, you, you always ask why, why, why? W, W, W. <laughs> so that's how you <laughs> learn physiology. So uh, if you think about it logically, uh, if you exercise, do you need more blood flow to the muscle, Vanessa? Yes, Prof. You do. So, so if you need more blood flow to the muscle, would you want the blood vessel to dilate or constrict? Um, to dilate. Dilate. So will that cause decrease in TPR? Yeah. Yep, uh, there you are. Yeah, it's, it's not difficult. <laughs> That's why. Okay, now let me ask a side question before we move on to question seven. Now, during exercise, besides the vasodilation in the skeletal muscle, there is another organ that also contributes to the vasodilation that lowers TPR, besides blood vessel in the muscle. Can somebody tell me which other organ? You also see significant vasodilation. Uh, and, and contributes to the, to the lowering, the decrease in TPR. Anyone? Vidya, can you answer? Hello, Vidya. Uh, so let me think again. for a second. Yeah, doctor. Sure. So if you think about when you're exercising, increased blood flow to the muscle, but there's also increased blood flow uh, to another organ during exercise that also lowers the TPR. Is it skin, Prof? Very good. Why do you say skin? Uh, what can you repeat the question? Why, why do you say skin? Because when we are, uh, from my experience, when we uh, like exercise, so I will get many sweats and the sweat is come out from the skin. Yeah, yeah. So the skin helps me to maintain my blood flow. Yeah, that's, that's good. Because when you exercise, you need to thermoregulate, you know, you, you generate heat. So the, there is also increase in the cutaneous blood flow for thermoregulation. And so vasodilation, so cutaneous vasodilation and vasodilation in the skeletal muscles are the two main uh, reasons why the TPR decreases uh, during exercise. Very good, Vidya. Okay, now question seven and eight is on the uh, special circulation of the brain and the heart, okay, autoregulation. So who wants to give an opinion for question seven? Maybe, uh, okay, Karina, okay. Hi, Karina. Hi, yeah, uh, her name is like the author of uh, pathophysiology book, yeah? Kumar. Oh. Yeah. That's very, <laughs> very famous. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe yeah. it's family. <laughs> uh, okay, so I will read the question first for the second question. Uh, in coronary autoregulation, the driving blood pressure is maintained relatively constant. So I think this statement is true because uh, coronary vascular flow is best described as vesic flow in the compressive forces of systole contract uh, 
counteract the driving force for flow in the coronary circulation, and therefore the majority of anterograde blood flow to the left ventricle occurs occurs during uh, diastole. And alternatively, much of the forward flow during systole is used to fill the upstream coronary compliance, while flow through coronary capillaries is relatively constant throughout the cardiac cycle. Okay, thank you, uh, Karina. Uh, so Karina thinks the sentence is true. That means uh, this is how coronary autoregulation uh, is defined. Any other different opinion besides Karina? Or all agree with Karina? There are 254 of you. So if nobody answered, that means all 254 agrees with Karina. Any different opinion? And then Asian student is uh, famous uh, the uh, the with the sinus the side, yes. <laughs> Actually, they know the answer, but sure. they want to answer. They want to speak up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So maybe I have to Call. to ask. Yeah, to yeah. ask. Uh, Vanessa, you can invite. You can uh, ask your friend. Yeah. Call Vanessa, your friend. call your friend, please. Uh, okay, doc. Um, I would like to call. Um, uh, Siti Pradita. <laughs> okay. So, who is that? Uh, I'm sorry, doctor. I want to change my connection first because my Wi Fi is error. Okay. Okay. So this is city, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Yes, for sure. Maybe uh, while waiting, uh, Dita. So, um, uh, how about uh, the the uh, blood flow? Is there any difference uh, uh, during exercise the blood flow to skin and to muscle, professor? Because you said that uh, yeah. during exercise is what is uh, increased, but uh, uh, I hear that during exercise, uh, the focus is in the in the muscle, not in the other organ. Yeah, is, is there any difference, professor? Yeah. Uh, I, I think because of the essential need to uh, lose heat uh, by sweating and, and, and also to by conduction and conduction. So the cutaneous circulation is uh, increased during exercise. Mm. Uh, so for, for the basis of losing heat, besides the vasodilation in the skeletal muscle. So the other organs which are non-essential, like the GI tract will obviously be vasoconstricted by the presympathetic as well as the blood flow to the kidney, I think, the renal circulation, yeah. But, but these two are definitely greater than normal. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Professor. Okay, yeah. uh, thank you, Professor Seng. Dita, are you ready? Yes. Uh, yes. yes, so, uh, yeah, you have a different opinion. Then, uh, uh, I think uh, for number seven, uh, the answer is true, Professor. Okay, so you, you agree with, with Karina? Yes, I, I agree with Karina. Okay, so I I just managed to draw something. Can you see this? Uh, okay, so this is the auto regulation graph. Okay, you see there's a plateau, right? Uh, if you if you remember your PowerPoint or your textbook, so the the, the y axis is flow, and the x axis is pressure. Okay, and, and this is the same graph that you see. Whether it is autoregulation in the brain, in the heart coronary, or even in the kidney, there's autoregulation. 
It's the same idea. Now, by, by definition, when we say autoregulation, the, 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 this is the plateau phase of the graph, okay? Autoregulation. So what this means is that as you change the pressure over a certain fluctuation, you are able to maintain the flow. So the plateau part is actually the flow. Uh, so by definition, autoregulation of in the coronary and cerebral uh, vasculature refers to autoregulation of blood flow, not the pressure. So the definition is that even though there are some fluctuation in pressure, that two organ uh, is able to maintain flow. Okay. So if you read the question, uh, here it says that the blood pressure is maintained. So actually, this is incorrect. We are not maintaining the pressure. We are maintaining the flow. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, uh, so this is, uh, you, unless you read carefully, this, this appears to be correct. Okay. This appears to be correct. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Another question on autoregulation. We can move on to question A. This one to the brain. Yeah. Maybe, Rita, uh, you can go on to read the number eight. Yep. Uh, okay, doctor. Uh, number eight, in cerebral autoregulation, the myogenic response was so constrict when the arterial pressure is high. Uh, uh, in my answer, I I choose is false. It's false, eh? Uh, what uh, is the uh, reason? I'm sorry, I think uh, that's a true. It's true, okay. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. I'm sorry, Professor. Yeah, can you explain a little bit? Yes. Um, uh, the when blood pressure is increased in the blood vessels and the blood vessels distend, they re uh, react uh, with a constriction. This is uh, the Bailey's effect. A uh, stretch of the muscle membrane uh, opens a uh, stretch activated uh, ion channels okay. and the cell then become depolarized. Uh, Depolarization and this is a, a calcium signal and triggers muscle contraction. Very good. Yeah. So, uh, so this one is the coronary. Sorry, the cerebral blood vessel that has a special property. We call it uh, myogenic. And as uh, Siti said, uh, when you stretch the cerebral arterioles, there is a, a stretch dated ion channel, which is actually fat-related calcium channels. So calcium influx and causes the basal constriction. So the myogenic smooth muscle response is responding to the increased pressure. And so by basal constricting, you maintain the flow. So uh, F flow is P over R. So when the P increase, you also increase the R by the myogenic basal constriction. And you help to maintain the flow. So this is uh, autoregulation. Okay, thank you, Siti. Yeah, for the yeah. Thank you, okay, Mr. let's move on to question nine. Dita, you can call your friends to uh, yeah, to right. answer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, least, okay, uh, okay, doctor. I choose uh, Ula Nadifa to answer okay. number nine. Yeah, Ula Nadifa. Okay. Hello, Ula. Ulanadifa. Ulanadifa. So we yeah, record. Okay, yeah, please uh, open your video. Thank you, uh, Dita. Thank you, uh, Karina. Okay, please answer. Please read and answer. Okay, doctor. Uh, so this is the number nine question. Oh, nine, yes. Uh, in P4, capillary blood flow uh, milliliter per minute in less than, than that in the veins. Okay, so my uh, opinion for this question is true because the velocity of blood flow is slowest in the capillaries because the total cross sectional area is the fittest. Okay, thank That's you. Ula, uh, what you say is true that the velocity of capillary blood flow 
is inversely proportional to the total cross-sectional area. So, so, so that sentence, there's nothing wrong. It's actually uh, correct. So the velocity of blood flow in the capillary uh, naturally should be the slowest because of exchange. Okay. Yeah, that's correct. Now, Ula, I want you to look at the unit in the bracket. This is mil volume per minute. So is this the unit for velocity? I'm asking you. Because you, you, you are explaining based on velocity. Velocity is how far you travel per time, right? Or, or, or how fast you travel per time, right? Distance per time. So it's actually a meter, centimeter, or whatever per time, right? Velocity. Agree? Uh, sorry, Prof. Uh, I think it's a uh, flow rate. Sorry? I think uh, it's a flow rate. For the flow rate. Yeah, so this, this one is volume per time. So we're talking about the total flow rate at the capillary flow, not velocity. Yeah? How does that compare with the total flow rate in the veins? So do you have an opinion if now that we focus on the unit? Whether it is still true? Okay, please answer, Ula. Hello, Ula. Um, wait, yeah. Prof, I think I, I need a uh, minute to think for it. He's thinking, okay, he's think, she's thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe need one semester, more one, uh, one semester more to think. <laughs> So if, if you think about the close, close loop of the cardiovascular system uh, and the blood is circulating, do you think every segment of the close loop, the flow is different or the same? This is a close loop, right? The whole cardiovascular system is a close loop. Do you think the flow would be the same in every part? Because blood is flowing in a loop. Volume per minute, huh? Uh, maybe because the flow rate is constant. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so so the concept here is that if you are thinking about total flow rate, volume per minute, through every part is actually the same. It has to be the same, or else you have <coughs> what we call vascular congestion in, in certain part. Okay, so if it is volume per time, it's actually the same. Uh, arteries, capillary, veins. But if it's velocity, then it's different. Yeah, okay. Right, thank you, Ola. Yeah. Okay, number 10. Anyone heard of vein bridge reflex? Anyone to answer? Or we have to invite someone? Yes. Yeah. Please, Ula, Ula uh, ask one your one. friend to... Yeah. Hello, Ula. Please ask one. Um, yeah, okay. okay. Uh, I think uh, Ivan Harley. Ivan, do we have Ivan before? Uh, yes, yes, doctor. Yeah, uh, yes. Ivan, yeah. Oh, Ivan okay. Yeah. Please, Ivan, yeah. Okay, so I'll read the question okay. first. Yeah, please. Uh, increase in venous return can produce tachycardia via the pain bridge reflex. And the answer is, I think, uh, true. Because like brain bridge is sympathetic reflex initiated by amount of blood in atria. So we focus on the amount of blood as venous return increase, the pressure in the superior and inferior vena cava increases. This results in an increase in the pressure of the red stream, which uh, stimulates the atrial stretch receptors, uh, or we can say like low pressure receptor zones. And these receptors in turn signal the medullary control centers to increase the heart rate, or we can say the tachycardia. 
I think that's my answer. For okay. Yeah, that's uh, that's correct. That the Bainbridge reflex describe uh, the effect of increased Venus return to produce a reflex tachycardia. So, uh, Ivan or Ivan, uh, tell me uh, in terms of what you say is correct. Tell me uh, what do you think is the purpose of the Bainbridge reflex? What you say is true, but what is the purpose? There must be a purpose. The reflex is correct. There's nothing wrong. Yeah. So what is the purpose of this reflex? Mm. <laughs> At, uh, homeostasis, maybe. Uh, yeah, of course it's part of homeostasis, but what it is, what is it trying to achieve? The being brief reflex. So every response in the body achieves a purpose, right? So what do you think Bain Bridge Reflex is trying to maintain or... Yeah, so that's important. So you ask why, 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 why? W, W, W. Uh, can I help answer, Prof? Yes, please. Oh, this is another okay. Ivan. A different Ivan. Okay, hi, Ivan. Uh, I think uh, Bain... Uh, been bridge flex it uh, is uh, maintain the stimulation of s node and uh, stimulates uh, baroreceptor uh, baro in the atria and uh, causing increase the s in uh, s and s stimulation okay so uh, you are you are basically uh, telling us that you will produce the tachycardia but we still haven't answered the question so what is the purpose of this reflex? So, so the two Ivans are giving the same answer, which is correct. But we still need to appreciate what is the purpose of this reflex. Maybe um, to prevent over distension of cardiac muscle, professor. Ah, okay, it's related to that. So actually, the, the it's, it's actually in your explanation, the, the first Ivan, that you said that if the right its pressure becomes greater, it stimulates the reflex, right? Uh, so the, the main purpose of the baby reflex is to maintain a low right atrial pressure or related to the central venous pressure. That's the reason. So that you so that your venous return can be continually better, uh, can, can be continually good. Because if the right atrial pressure or the central venous pressure becomes high, it will affect the gradient for venous return. Okay. Yeah. okay, good. Let's move to question 11. Uh, something about cardiac cycle. Yeah, I, I find, yeah. but I find maybe <laughs> uh, you, you will, uh, you can ask someone to, to answer. Ah, uh, yes. Number 11, yeah. Uh, I will ask Cindy Hartono. Okay, Cindy, your call. Yeah. <laughs> Cindy won't like you for calling her. <laughs> yeah. Hello, Cindy. Hmm. Hello, sir. Where are you? Yeah. Okay. Please open your video, Cindy. Turn on your video. Hi, Cindy. Uh, hi, sir. So uh, I'm going to answer the number 11. 11, uh, yeah. Second heart sound is heard after ventricular repolarization. Uh, in my opinion, it is false because second sound occurs when semilunar valves close at the beginning of ventricular diastole. And the second sound is produced in part by a hemodynamic events immediately following closure of the aortic and pulmonic valve. And then the vibration of the second heart sound occur at the end of ventricular contraction and identify the onset of ventricular diastole and the end of mechanical systole. Uh, that's from me, sir. Yes. So, uh, so, so, in so in summary, you are saying this sentence is true or false? Um, false. False, huh? Okay. Uh, 
Yeah. Anyone has a different opinion? Uh, Cindy thinks it's false. So, uh, so you think it should be after depolarization, eh? Cindy? So, so uh, repolarization is before the ventricles relax. Okay. Uh, sir, uh, uh, after I think about it, uh, I want to change my. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Is it okay, sir? Yes, it's fine. It's fine. Yes, that's good. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, in my opinion, it is true because true. the closure of semilunar fault happen in isometric relaxation. Right. Right. Yeah. So, so this sentence is true. Uh, the cardiac cycle is quite complex because on the same timeline, you have uh, electrical activity, you have uh, ECG, you have the mechanical events, pressure and volume changes, and you also have the heart sound. But I think one of the concepts to know is that the, the, mechanical the mechanical activity follows the electrical activity. Okay? So the second heart sound, which is obviously uh, which is obviously produced by either uh, the contraction or the relaxation. In this case, it is a relaxation uh, of the ventricle muscle. So just remember that the first heart sound signals the beginning of systole, and the second heart sound is the beginning of diastole. Okay. So, and this comes after the electrical event. So first heart sound after QRS, electrical event, second heart sound after T wave, which is the ventricle repolarization. Okay. So this sentence is correct. Yeah. Thank you, Cindy. All right. So number 12. Cindy, you can call somebody. Uh, I want to choose our smartest friend here. Uh, Kevin Christian Sandre. Okay, our smartest friend. Okay, yes. who is that? Uh, hello. Thank you for the opportunities. Uh, Hi, Kevin. Man. Hello, sir. That's my first clip. Okay, 12. Question 12. My first clip. Yeah, yes, very clear. Yeah. Okay, so, sir. Question number twelve, and I will I will try to read the question first. Sure. When a very is respond increases having activity, not all the arterioles in every are constricted. In my opinion, that's a false statement. Just the purpose of very response is to make a good perfusion in every organ. So, in my opinion, if this uh, if this reflex happen, if this reflex run. The activity of the arterioles will happen in all of the organs to make it to make good perfusion and effort. That's all, sir. For if I'm wrong. Okay, so uh, so the question is uh, okay. Let's say when you have hypovolemia, you get the better reflex, then you get an increase in pathetic. So the and you, you normally say we normally say that. Because of the battery reflex, the total peripheral resistance increases, right? We always say that. Now, so the question is, when you say total peripheral resistance increases, increased by battery reflex, right? We always say that. So does the total peripheral resistance increase includes total all the arterials in in every organ? So service is not all. That means uh, some are not constricted during the increase in PPR. Is that true? 
Yeah, I, I think we have uh, a bit uh, uh, drop the, the the disturb in the in the line, professor. So we cannot uh, follow your uh, voice oh. clearly. Yeah. Oh, I see. You you can't hear me. Uh, not so clearly. Mm. Uh, yeah. Oh, there's some uh, echo. Yes, yeah, that's we right. can hear that's you, professor. Yeah. Okay. Okay, maybe, uh, maybe the those with your mic on, be muted. Maybe let them my help. Yeah. Can you mute your mic? Yeah, yes. there is some disturbance now. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Hello, sir. All clear. Is that better now? Oh, it's better now, huh? Uh, it's better, sir. There's still some the voice are clear. Okay, so let me continue. Okay, let me maybe just uh, tell you that this sentence is true. Yeah, because if you think about it, when you get a barrel reflex and you get increase in TPR, the arterioles in the brain and in the heart should not be constricted or else you make the situation worse. The essential organs are not constricted as part of the increased TPR. Do you follow that? Yeah. You get constriction in the skin, maybe the splenic circulation, but not in the heart and the brain. Yeah. So this sentence is correct. Okay. Thank you, sir, for, yep. the, for the answer and for, and for the correcting me. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, last question. 13. Please call the Maybe I will choose a man in front of my uh, camera. Malik. Maliko. Okay, back to Maliko. Yeah, okay. Hello, Malikul. I will answer the question number 13. Okay, first, I will, uh, hello, doctor. Uh, yes, I can hear you. Okay, uh, I will answer the question number 13. Okay, I will read this first. When the arterial compliance is decreased, both the systolic and diastolic pressures will increase. Uh, okay. And my answer is false, because this is the arterial compliance is an index of the elasticity of large arteries, such as the thorax aorta. Uh, arterial compliance is measured ultrasound as a pressure and volume. And then arterial compliance mostly depends on arterial intrinsic elastic properties and is a determinant of the propagation speed of the pulse pressure wave decreased arterial compliance is responsible for both an increase in the incident pressure wave and the higher effect of reflected pressure waves. This increase systolic pressure and ventricular afterload and generates left ventricular hypertrophy. I think that's uh, of my answer, Prof. Okay, so uh, if I heard you correctly, the systolic pressure will increase when the arterial compliance decrease, okay? So the first part is correct. And, and you said the sentence is correct because is, is that what I heard? That the whole sentence is correct? That the diastolic also increase? 
the whole sentence did you say is correct this uh, medical uh, answer it i think that's false prof because the diastolic will will remain unchanged or decrease Uh, I think that's false because that the diastolic decreased, Prof. Yeah. Okay. Why does the why does the diastolic decrease? Uh, okay, Prof. I will think it a okay. minute. Yeah. Okay. Maybe uh, you mentioned something about elastic recoil, which is the key to the explanation. When the arterial compliance is decreased, that means the arteries are stiffer, st stiffer arteries. So it can be old arteries or maybe pathophysiology arteries. So definitely the systolic blood pressure will increase. When the arteries are more stiff, for the same stroke volume, there is a greater pressure on the arterial wall. Okay, so systolic pressure decreases, uh, sorry, increases. Now, diastolic pressure is dependent on the, normally dependent on the elastic recoil. Because during diastole, there is no pressure from the ventricles. So what actually provides the driving pressure for blood flow to continuously occur during ventricle relaxation, diastole, is actually the elastic recoil of the arteries. So this is what we mean by diastolic blood pressure. So which means that if the arteries are more stiff, you've, you've lost this elastic recoil. So you can expect that the diastolic pressure, which is, which is actually due to the elastic recoil, will be lower. Yeah, so that's the reason. So when the arterial compliance is decreased, systolic blood pressure will increase, but, but the diastolic blood pressure will decrease. Yeah because of the reduction in elastic recoil. So overall, the sentence is uh, incorrect because of that. Okay, thank you very much. I think we've covered uh, uh, some major concepts in cardiovascular physiology. Uh, thank you for your responses. So back to you, Dr. Hadian. Yes, uh, thank you so much, Prof. Chang. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, so dear student, uh, you know that Prof. Cheng is uh, the initiator of Intermedical School Physiology Quiz. Uh, unfortunately, it's, well, uh, but uh, because the COVID, we cannot do it. Yeah. So maybe next year or maybe the following years, we will start yeah. again. And I think uh, some of you will be very good candidate to representative UNDIP to uh, MSPG. You know that MSPG is the not only uh, local event, but the World event, yeah, the global event, because the participant is not only from Asia, but also from Europe, from Africa, and maybe some in America also. Yeah, so uh, uh, Prof. Seng initiate, initiate the MSPK, and we the and the question today is uh, the MSPK class uh, question. Yes, it's very very uh, good uh, for us to know more about the uh, cardiovascular physiology. Yeah. Uh, so, do you have something more to uh, to explain to us, Professor, uh, related uh, to this question? No, yeah. I think it's sufficient for for today. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you, Professor. Yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe uh, for for the uh, if uh, you don't mind, please uh, ask one last question, Professor, because it's also from the student. Yeah. So they uh, at. Uh, uh, in the class, they ask about the the relation about uh, in the post pressure with the uh, oncotic pressure. So is there any relation uh, post pressure with oncotic pressure, professor? Yeah. Uh, what is the first one? Pulse pressure. Uh, your pulse pressure, yes. Mm. Uh, no, it's it's different. Uh, pulse pressure, by definition, is just the difference between the systolic blood pressure and the diastolic blood pressure, SBP minus DBP. And that's the meaning of pulse pressure. Whereas oncotic pressure is due to the protein concentration in the blood. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's quite different. Okay, Professor, yeah. yeah. 
Okay, yeah. So uh, I, I forget. I forgot the, the name the of the student who asked that question. But this is Prof saying already answer your question. Yeah, maybe uh, because the searching time is very limited because I have another uh, schedule. So I uh, give the time to the Tertanjung again as moderator. Yeah. Please, Dr. Tanjung. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Hardian. Uh, now we have uh, reached to the end of uh, the invited lecture. Thank you very much, Prof. Cheng, for okay. the wonderful interactive lecture. We hope uh, this lecture recharge our energy to provide our knowledge about uh, physiology of the vascular system. Yeah. And the last but not least, we will have a photo session all together with Prof. Cheng. Thank you. To all the nice. participants. Yeah. <laughs> So then yeah. I can remember your name. Please, your your video on. please all uh, open your video. Yeah. Hmm. Please uh, your face also. Hmm. Please wait for a moment when we taking the pictures. Yeah, I think we finish for everything. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we hope we can meet again. Uh, yeah, sure. In M MSPK soon, I'm sorry. Yeah, or we'll be in uh, Indonesian uh, info. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. So uh, our students. Yeah. So we are very glad. We are very proud to have. Uh, approaching uh, today so and i hope uh, it's not the last time we uh, all with prof Cheng. maybe next time okay. we will uh, invite prof Cheng again to to give uh, to discuss with us and also uh, i hope some of you yeah uh, can help another undip uh, as a participant of MSPG next time okay. yeah Thank you so much, Professor. Yeah, uh, please uh, keep your help because you are a very important person in physiology, in the world physiology. So please uh, be always be healthy, Professor. Yeah, and also say hello to uh, your wife and also pro, pro, uh, to your son and grandson. Yeah, and also uh, to your father because I saw your father behind you. <laughs> yeah. He always yeah. comes. Yeah, yeah. Group, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's good. It's very nice. Uh, we can see your family, Professor. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay. okay, thank you so much, Professor. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Bye bye, Professor. Thank you. Ada di semua. Yeah, please. Yeah, say hello to Prof. Cheng. Yeah. Thank you, Prof. Okay, bye bye. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, Professor. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir, for the knowledge. Thank you so much, Professor. Thank you, Professor. Thank you so much. See you soon, Prof. You, Prof. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Okay, Adede, terima kasih atas partisipasinya ya yeah, uh, hari ini. Ini adalah yang pertama ya. Yeah. Yang pertama nanti kita akan berusaha untuk memanggil, uh, mengundang buat kelas profesor lagi untuk uh, di dalam bidang fisiologi ya yeah, untuk memberikan kuliah Adede. Uh, entah itu Profesor Carol atau mungkin salah satu penulis 
uh, buku Faal ya Dokter Tanjung ya yang nanti mungkin bisa kita invite untuk memberikan kuliah ke uh, adik-adik ya. Uh, ya yeah. uh, ini mungkin ya yeah. sudah mengundang mengkoneksikan kami dengan Prof Cheng. <laughs> Akhirnya yeah. kita mengundang untuk invited lecture dokter. Iya, yeah. sudah so, 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 sudah sudah lama rencananya ini, cuman karena apa? Uh, waktu itu kita terbentur pandemi, kemudian ada libur lama, uh, jadi tidak tidak bisa. Saya sempat juga Prof Cheng uh, ingin ikut kuliah bersama kita, jadi artinya mendengarkan kuliah kita begitu ya, sehingga terus saya bilang uh, kuliah kita dalam bahasa Indonesia, dia bilang I am Malaysian, I can speak Malay, so I can understand the uh, your lecture, ya. sempat, sempat begitu, tapi terus kok tidak jadi ya, nanti mungkin satu saat uh, kita akan mengundang beliau uh, untuk mengikuti kuliah kita, jadi mungkin dari salah satu mungkin ya, mungkin Mbak Dr. Tanjung itu Dr. Darmawati ya, yang apa bahasa Inggrisnya bagus-bagus gitu ya, nah, jadi bisa kita undang ya. Oh iya, ini ada Dr. Gana, ada deh, mungkin belum pernah ketemu ya, Dr. Gana masih on, masih masih online, Dr. Gana. Ya, siang dok, masih dok. Nah ya, videonya Dr. Gana ini baru saja selesai pendidikan uh, ortopedi ya. Uh, Dr. Gana bisa dilihatkan videonya Dr. Gana. Nah, ya ini Dr. Gana ya. Ya, ini Dr. Gana ya. Jadi bisa bisa nanti ada di ketemu ya. Uh, Dr. Gana ini dulu S2-nya di uh, apa? di uh, genetik tapi juga ke mana? ke Jepang ya waktu itu pendidikan di Jepang kemudian uh, mengambil kuliah uh, ortopedi ya. Dr. Gana biasanya ngajar apa Dr. Gana? Ya, sebelum saya belum ya respirasi sekarang respirasi ya iya okay. yeah. ya waktu itu iya yeah. yeah. yeah, berarti nanti sebentar lagi akan di kuliah beri kuliah oleh dokter gana ya yeah. ya yeah. uh, ya yeah. oke okay. siapa lagi ya yang senior mbak mbak dokter dai halo, mungkin halo, bisa dok. bisa saya halo sebentar dokter dai halo dok halo dokter dai di mana ini posisi di bertugas di di mana Oh, iya. ini sebentar saya tempat saya itu speakernya tidak terlalu keras jadi harus suaranya biar sedang, keras. Sedang jadi tim medis di lapangan tenis dok. Oh ya, nah. Pertandingan itu. tenis. Iya. Ya, dokter ya, dokter Dai itu uh, apa spesialisnya itu olahraga ya, jadi artinya selalu terlibat dalam event-event besar olahraga ya. Nanti kalau ada adik yang yang senang lari bisa atau senang apa bisa ikut. lari-lari ya sama dokter Dai atau yang lain tim tim olahraga yang lain ya kalau belum minat silakan bilang dokter Dai ya ya yeah. uh, dokter ini termasuk yang nilai tuvernya tuvernya paling tinggi <laughs> seundip uh. ah, ya nilai tuvernya yang teratas seundip hmm. ada tips untuk meningkatkan nilai itu meningkatkan nilai tuvel dok bisa diusahakan <laughs> bisa dipelajari gimana dokter Dai nanti diajari ya yeah. 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 Ya, yeah. uh, kemudian ada siapa lagi ya di sini? Ada ya, terlihat, mungkin ada terlihat sedang nyetir, ada terlihat. Ada terlihat sedang nyetir, ada. Sedang jalan, kayak dok. Jalan ya. Oh, ya. Hmm. Kemudian, ya, yeah, oke. Okay. Uh, Dokter Yosef sudah bergabung belum, Dokter Yosef? Halo, Dokter Liha. Hmm. Ya mungkin sedang nyetir ya, terlihat ya mungkin tidak uh, bisa ajukan ya. Siapa lagi nih ya yang teman-teman dosen? Hmm, karena mungkin sedang ada acara juga ya. Uh, ya, oke okay, ya, oke okay, uh, ya, oke okay, kalau begitu ada di semua. Uh, ini adalah kita latihan ya, latihan untuk berhadapan dengan dengan profesor-profesor dalam. dengan berbahasa Inggris ya, saya harapkan nanti uh, ada di semua ini yang bisa menjadi wakil dari Undip. Uh, saya sudah saya sudah melihat kira-kira siapa-siapa yang punya potensi untuk mewakili Undip dalam kegiatan MSPG maupun Info ya. Kita adalah event uh, kalau Info adalah event nasional dalam dengan berbahasa Indonesia, kalau MSPG uh, dengan bahasa Inggris ya. Dan tadi saya dikatakan levelnya adalah dunia ya. Hmm. 
Oke, mungkin Mbak Tanjung, kalau mau ditutup, Mbak Tanjung silahkan. Dokter Tanjung, kalau mau ditutup, ya silahkan. Ya, terima kasih Dokter Herdian atas uh, kesempatannya kepada kami, memberikan kesempatan kepada kami untuk bisa belajar dengan bersama dengan Prof. Cheng hari ini, sangat uh, memberikan pencerahan sekali, Dokter. Terima kasih, Dokter Tanjung. Ya. Ya, mudah-mudahan nanti berlanjut terus ya. Ini dokumen bimbingannya dokter. Sami-sami dokter Tanjung saya juga baru belajar ya. ya. Oke, adik-adik semua juga terima kasih atas uh, partisipasinya yang sangat aktif pada hari ini. Semoga bisa memberikan ilmu yang bermanfaat untuk bekal ke depannya ya, adik-adik semua. Terima kasih. Ya. Terima kasih ya. Bu Tanjung ya. Terima kasih Bu Tanjung. Terima kasih Bu Tanjung, terima kasih Bu Dai, terima kasih Dr. Gana, terima kasih, ya. sama-sama, ya. Ya. ya, sampai ketemu lagi ya, Dede, ya. terima kasih, salam, ya. terima kasih dokter, ya. terima kasih dokter, terima kasih dokter, sama, terima kasih sama, terima kasih dokter, terima kasih dokter, ya. terima kasih dokter, 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 Iya, dokter. Masih, oh ya, ya wis, ya. Terima kasih, dokter. Sama-sama, yuk.